get the revelation about this, your life will change. Because now whatever you bind, you'll have. Whatever you pray, you'll get. Whatever you believe, it will happen. But because we struggle to enter into the very presence of God because we think it's something there. That's the problem with the supernatural. People think it's an event. They think we need to go to an event to get the supernatural, to get a miracle, to get salvation. It's not an event. It's a lifestyle. You live that. You operate from that dimension of the power of God, of the glory of God. Now let me help you with a couple of things on uh, spiritual warfare. One more scripture, which will be our base theme for the whole two, three weeks, is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now we're going to deal with some misconceptions about spiritual warfare. When you are believing wrong, your actions will be wrong. And when your actions is wrong, your whole life is wrong. And you'll pray wrong, you'll believe wrong, you'll do wrong things. So I need to get this thing right as an apostle because that is what my function is to bring doctrine right. So there is a lot of controversial things going on at the moment about spiritual warfare. Spe people speak about the devil and uh, the kingdom of darkness, that it rules cities and nations. And I understand all that stuff. And they rule houses and homes. And people get, can get very, very quickly into error. Very quickly into the wrong thing. Very quickly. If we don't keep it to the, to the center point, we can all get offline and all get into the ditch and all start becoming weird people. There's something that I don't like and that's a weird Christian. Just be balanced, man. Just, just be okay. Just don't be weird. But, you know, we get weird people. And because they have not taught, been taught the Word of God accurately. Pure Word of God. What does the Word of God say regarding spiritual warfare? And so spiritual warfare is a subject, like I said, that, can, that must be preached in this end time move of God. But it must be preached accurately and correctly. Now, the Azusa Street Revival started in 1906, lasted for three years up till 1909. It started with a black man, William Seymour, that started praying for God for his city. And then all of a sudden, revival started breaking out. Very powerful move of God, the Azusa Street. He would go to this little church and pray there every day and worship God. It was birthed from worship. Worship is the key that we need to, that will sustain the move of God. And so... He started singing a song called, Bend Me Lower, Jesus, Bend Me Lower at the Feet of Jesus. And he would just go and put a cloth around his, his face and just go and praise and worship God every day. And then revival started coming. People started seeing what was happening. So for three years, the Azusa Street revival uh, just hit the world. Three times a day they had services for seven days a week for three years with no guest speaker. And over 50 million people got saved. Amen. If it wasn't for the Azusa Street revival in 1906, we wouldn't have had, not had a move of God today. So we see that God wants to bring back something in the kingdom of God. But here's the principle of the Azusa Street revival. This was the principle. They said this. They made sure every day that they studied the scriptures to see if they are doing everything right. So now I'm speaking to you about the movement of the supernatural and about your life. If we want to keep this movement long enough or sustain it long enough, we have to make sure we do everything according to Scripture and stick to the Scriptures and not get off balance and weird. Stick to the presence of God and stick to what God wants us to do. God never changed. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to say the devil never changed either. He's also yesterday and today. And forever the same devil. Why? Because he hasn't changed his tactics, his, his, his plans, his uh, maneuvers, the way he does things, his tactics, is that? Tactics. tactics, everything stays the same. Why can't I say that word now? And everything stays the same. He is the same. So we are not ignorant of his devices. If he's done it for 2,000 years, he's still going to do it for the next 2,000 years. And so we have to know what... What his, his ways, his manners, the way he does things. Now, if we don't teach this correctly, there will be a lot of casualties. There will be a lot of damage. 
and I want you to walk with me this road. Will you walk with me on this road, on this journey to know the balance of supernatural things? Now, spiritual warfare captivates people's attention. And that right there, what I've just said, is the trick of the enemy. It captivates the attention of the people. Oh, did you see that chair was moving? Did you see how the demon came out? I walked in that house and I could sense the presence of Satan and stuff was moving. Now listen, I'm not denying that. I saw it with my own eyes. I was in deliverance ministry. We did a lot of those things, saw it happening. I don't deny that. The problem is when it intrigues you, when it catches your attention. And now you start magnifying the devil more than you're magnifying the Lord. And now all of a sudden we have spiritual warfare ministries. That's where I need to bring the balance into the kingdom of God. We see spiritual warfare toys being made at the moment for children. Spiritual warfare clothes. Spiritual warfare retreats. Spiritual warfare conferences. Spiritual warfare, this. There's a spiritual militant conference. There is a spiritual air force. So I'm just, I'll get to those things now. So what's happening now? Things are getting off track, man. There's no such thing as a spiritual warfare ministry. Yeah, you can type now on, on email. There's no such thing. There is the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor. That's it. That operates in those things. But you can't make a ministry out of that. There is a ministry of administration, the Bible says. Ministry of, of giving. But I don't see a ministry of spiritual warfare. So people get all weird. Take off that, that sign there. You know, it's made by, the, by a devil, devilish company, and that brings the curse in the church. And I'm like, where do you come from? Where, where are you? I get the most emails about Christmas. Most. Why are you having Christmas trees in the church? Why are you having Christmas lights in the church? It's a pagan worshiping thing. And the more emails I get, the more trees I buy. The more lights I buy, the more Christmas things I buy, because it's not a, that Christmas tree. That's why, why do you say it's made in China? Well, then don't drive Toyota or a Hyundai. Get out of that car you're driving. Don't wear that watch you're wearing. Don't use that Samsung phone. All messed up. Most of the clothes you are wearing are made in China. So don't get all uptight with this stuff. But we are so intrigued with this devil. Hello? That we forget what Jesus has done on that cross. Just made it simple. Just the name of Jesus. And I'm going to expose the devil's works and his false teachings and doctrines. And we're going to disarm his power of our lives. We're going to take back what we need to know about Jesus. He is our line of Judah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is everything to us. How can the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and, and, and the Alpha and the Omega, the one that upholds 75 billion galaxies, that God, how can He be subjected to the devil? Come on, man. He lives in me and greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. So they have spiritual um, uh, air forces. They range 737, Boeing 737s. 160 people get in a plane and they fly over cities and bind the devil. Because it's in high places. Take helicopters and throw it over the cities with oil. They go to the 42nd floor in, in, in hotels. Or they rent the top floor of the hotel in the city and pray spiritual warfare. To bind the devil in heavenly places. Let me just ask, I have not seen one scripture where Jesus lifted off one feet from the ground. To bind any devil in, the, in heaven. He bind him from where he was standing. And the Bible says whatever you bind on the earth. Shall be bound in heaven. Hallelujah. 
Paul cast out demons, man. Prison doors were shaking. Stuff was happening while on the earth. You don't have to go to a hotel on the top floor to pray. You don't have to do all those things. You don't have to rent a helicopter. You can just, wherever you stand right now, you can bind every devil and they must obey. Kenneth Hagin said when he cast out a demon from that woman that was, was a witch and she held the whole city in that the, in the witchcraft um, spell, when he cast out those demons, those demons came to him at night in his hotel room. He heard the, the windows shaking and the curtain shaking and the, his bed was moving. And when he woke up and he saw, he saw the two demons that he cast out and he said, oh, it's only you. Get out of my room. And they ran out of the room. Two demons that held the whole city. Just because of a man of God that says, get out of my room, they went out of his room. And then he saw, no, my bed is in the middle of the room. So he says, in the name of Jesus, come back here. They came back. He says, move my bed back to where you got it from. Yes, sir. They moved his bed back and they walked out of there. That is the power that a Christian should operate in and the anointing of God. I am telling you today. The devil took some of your contracts. He stole some of your business. He stole some of your marriages. He stole some of your joy. It is time that you get up and say, Hey, devil, bring back that business. Bring back that clients. Bring back what you took from me. Come on, how many of you believe that today? That you have the power to command? Whatever. Whatever we bind. Whatever we lose on, on the earth. Not in an airplane. Shall be bound. Come on now. Are you with me here? The Bible speaks about it. And so spiritual warfare is just a subject in the Bible. You don't have to buy clothes for that. All right. Now, in today's life, we have camouflage clothing. And I love my camouflage. The kids love it. If I wear a camouflage shirt, my kids will always tell me, put something on that. You can't wear naked you can't walk around naked like that. I said, I've got clothes on. They said, no, we don't see it. It's camouflage. <laughs> anyway, he's young people. But anyway, that's, that's the fashion. But that doesn't mean you have to wear it to every service because you, have now, you, you are now an intercessor or a spiritual man that you have to now dress up with guns and, and warfare stuff. Listen, in this church, we wear that. When we come for prayer, I like putting on, mom even loved putting on the camouflage. And we, it's, not, it's not that we're now in war. It's just clothing. So just like spiritual warfare is a subject, so the Bible also says that running your race until the end is also a subject. So why don't you come with your athletic stuff to church? Just like running your race and spiritual warfare is a subject don't make it a, a, a ministry. The ministry of, of athletics. Demons must obey. Say this with me. Demons must obey. Shout it. Say demons must obey. They, listen, they must. If you tell him get out, he must get out. You cannot struggle with a demon. Hey, I'm struggling more with you than with demons this morning. No, I'm just joking. Listen, stop struggling with demons. If you tell him go, he must go. Must. He must leave your business. He must leave your children. He is not greater than the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Come on, greater is he that's in me than he that's on a Christmas tree. They write to me, they say to me, you can't have Christmas trees in the church. You're affecting the Holy Ghost. I said, go and find another church that's dry and empty. Yeah, we will have Christmas lights and Christmas trees and whatever you want. Listen, I see more miracles happening in Christmas than any other time. Because that's the greatest gift. Are you with me here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there was a man that I prayed for in Clarksdorp. He had polio. He was born 
with, a, with the sickness, the polio, and his one leg was shorter than the other, and he had this steel boot he had to wear. So he came to the front for miracle. For a miracle, I prayed for him. But when I prayed for him, I said to him this. I said, say Jesus is Lord, and he couldn't say that. Now, every time you test if somebody's got a demon, you, you ask them, look at me and say Jesus is Lord. Now, they will probably say that, but they won't look you in the eyes. All right? Because a demon cannot confess Jesus is Lord. So you ask him, look at me, look in my eyes, say Jesus is Lord. And when I said that, this demon started manifesting from this man. It was going crazy. He was breaking chairs. I just went and, and stood there and watched until he's now done. And then I went up. I said, how do you feel? He says, now I feel good and wonderful. And all of a sudden, the miracle took place. His leg grew out. And now he was unbalanced. Because the one leg is now, that was short is now level and the shoe is now out of line. So I said, what shoe do you wear? He says, number seven. I asked the church, is there anybody who's got a number seven shoe? And a man came running to the front and gave him a pair of seven, a size seven shoe. Listen, that's just how God works. Don't tell people. Listen, we see, on, we see how demons come out of the, in this church, right? Because we enforce that. We see miracles. We see salvations. But don't tell people, you're going to vomit, you're going to scream, you're going to shout. Those things will happen, however the demon manifests. All right, but don't tell them that. Otherwise, they, can't, they, they, they start focusing on that. All right? And then eventually we give credit to the devil again. If they vomit, if they scream, whatever, that's fine. It's manifestation. I always tell the devil. This is what I tell him. You got in quietly, and you're going to leave quietly. 